we just went from this to this. A huge difference. In my opinion, the stock taillights on most Toba RVs just aren't quite big enough for the size of the RV. Are you ready? I am. Are you trying to trick me? I'm testing brakes. Okay, hold on. Let off the brake and try. Oh. Okay, now I see the difference. Okay. Yeah, brake. Left. Right. Reverse. Coming up. Let me know what your thoughts are on that down in the comments below. I'd also like to hear if your RV came from the factory with lights more like this. This upgrade is really pretty simple. I'm going to walk you through the whole thing, so let's jump right into it. So today, I'm going to be upgrading the taillights on our 410. You might remember in our 397, I did this by getting some extra taillights, and I think I put three extras up along the top. Well, recently, I saw a post on Facebook from Mater to Mater. Thanks, Mater. <laughs> for these 60 inch LED strips. Comes like this, folded basically, which I assume is 30 inch, uh, and then extends out to be this full 60 inch. Should do all kinds of cool window, does the brake lights, does reverse lights, does all of it. So I am gonna figure out how to get this thing installed. Now, it comes with this type of end on it. Um, and I'm not really sure how that'll get wired in. So I think the first step is gonna to be to hook up the truck and just meter out some of these lights back here, some of the wires that go to the taillights to see which wire does what, which one does turn signal, which one does reverse, etc. Now there's also some mention on that thread about needing some sort of controller module for trucks newer than 2020. Uh, our Ford F450 is a 2022, so, I don't know what I'm gonna run into. My first step is to see if I can get this wired in and working before I mount it. Uh, I may have to order another piece for it, I'm not sure yet, but that's what this discovery phase is about, just figuring out what we need for the project before we get going. So I got the truck hooked up. I'm gonna go back there and meter some stuff out and see what's what. I got the left taillight removed to see what we were dealing with. Then I opened our ramp patio door. I removed part of our patio railing to get that out of the way. And then I was able to access the small panel on the side that accesses the door lift mechanism, which is where I can also access those wires a little bit better. None of this mechanism goes up and down. It's just a cable that goes up and around and down. Uh, so I'm not too worried about stuff moving in here, just like I was in the last RV. I also determined that these four wires here do go down. I've got them in a nice wire loom, which is nice. After taking that panel and getting access to the wires and where they connect to the RV, I realized that they were using the three wire self-stripping moisture resistant taps that I see in a lot of applications on RVs, but only two of those were being used. So the other tap was open for me to put the probe in there. As we go through this, and I'm talking about wire colors in the RV, I'm referring to the wire colors coming out of the back of those taillights. That is gonna be pretty stock. What they connect to inside the RV is anybody's guess. It could be any color, any kind of wire. So I'm not even gonna talk about those. When you meter these out, use your taillight wires as a reference. The important thing to do here is to map out each taillight function to a wire, and then you can use that information going forward to wire up the light bar. This color mapping should also be the same on both sides of your RV, so you should only have to do it once. You will need a basic DC voltmeter to take these readings. Any meter will do. You don't have to use this expensive one you're seeing me use. Even the cheapest, most analog of meters will work for this just fine. We're talking about DC measurements here. So the black lead is gonna go to ground, which should be anywhere on your RV chassis where there's bare metal. I use a little clip adapter for mine and just clipped it right to a bolt on the frame. Then of course you take the red lead and insert it to get your readings. How you use that probe to get those readings will be different depending on what kind of crimps you're talking about. As you can see on these, I've got that third hole there to be able to use that. But you can usually get these probes up next to the wire past the insulation enough to get a reading. As you can see in this fancy grid I created, I took measurements on each of the four wires for each of the functions of the taillights. Just running as normal, uh, blinker and brake, and also reverse. Once I have all these mapped out, I can determine which color wire does what. So these are my measurements uh, coming off the wires. So I can tell which ones are turn. Uh, looks like the white is my ground, which matches up with 
how this is wired. Um, it looks like the red is for brakes and blinking and the black is just running and yellow is the uh, reverse lights. So rather than cut this wire, potentially mess this up in case this thing doesn't work and I have to return it, I got a little $9 wiring harness down at Lowe's. So I can just plug that in here. Now I can deal with these wires uh, and of course this wire. This is the reverse light. Uh, the big difference here is this thing is designed to go on the back of a truck and be out like this and have one side be a right blinker and one side be a left blinker. So those particular wires I looked up online and the green and yellow Green is right, yellow is left, so the green and yellow coming out of here, I'll just tie those together since both sides of the blinker are going to be on one side and they'll want to blink together. And that'll give us the nice little, you know, thing that kind of runs up and down, hopefully. So armed with this information, I got the light bar wired in directly. You can see for this test, I just used a wire nut to combine the left and right turn signals from the wiring harness because I'm not worried about it. This is just temporary for testing to see if I need the module adapter or not. I also just used the existing three wire crimps that were there since they had an extra lead in them. I just pulled the old ones out, added the new one in and crimped them back down. Again, this is just strictly temporary. I will put brand new connectors on this when we wired in permanently. Alrighty. Now we shall go hook up the truck and turn it on and try the various modes. I'm gonna hook up the truck and then I'll put, take you guys back there to watch it as I turn it on. Oh, I hope this works. I hope this works. If it does, I can wire it up and be done today. I love wrapping up projects to completion. All right, put you guys here. Here are the lights all hooked up. First, we'll just be running lights. We'll see what that gets us. That looks good. There's normal running lights. Now let's turn on, let's try a left blinker. Well, yeah, that's not good. Shoot. I'm not sure if you can see it, but down here, just the first block is flashing. So I am going to need that part. Damn, that stinks. There's um, really, really no sense testing further. Um, the blinker functions don't work and that's their primary function. So I'm going to need that adapter. So now I got to go search and find it, see if I can get it quickly. Three days later. Okay, it's a couple of days later and I got a couple of these control modules in that are supposed to help with the signal coming from newer trucks like 20, 20 and higher, I think. It's probably going to be hit and miss as to which ones need this and which don't. Uh, turns out we do. Now, Opt7, the company that makes this light bar makes these, but they're out of stock. So I got this from a third party. I'll have a link and some pictures on the screen, but I'm just going to plug this right in line here. I'm going to slide it down so it's in the shade because we're in direct sunlight this morning. So let's hook this sucker up. Man, I hope this works. This is running lights. That's awesome. I am now going to try left blinker and hopefully the whole thing, I think it's the yellow, hopefully that all lights up now. Oh yeah, buddy. That is awesome. That's amazing. And it's well in sync with the other light. This and the original light are in sync. Nice. Let's see what reverse looks like. Oh, I left my blinker on, so reverse and blinker are still on. Let me go turn off the blinker. Wow, that is a bright reverse light. That is going to be awesome. Once I was satisfied that the adapter worked, woohoo! I went about physically mounting the light bar so I could then tackle the wiring. I just used a metal drill bit to drill a pilot hole, and then I used a step bit to widen the hole just enough to fit the light bar wires in. The light bar kit conveniently comes with a plastic piece that'll hold the two ends in alignment while mounting it but it doesn't snap on, so you gotta kinda hold that piece right there. It's okay because it's the center of the bar and it's kinda centered for you know gravity and weight anyway, so holding it right there, I was able to peel off the backing on the bottom and top sections, carefully lay them down 
I always put these things on very lightly until I have a chance to back up and look at them. Then I will push them down a little more firmly. So now it is physically mounted and all I need is a little bit of silicone sealant right in here. I think I've got some black, but I'll squirt that in there. And my wiring is right here. So uh, let's get to the wiring. I decided it was simplest to use that four pin wiring harness that I use for testing in the permanent install. I mean, it's already there. I know the wire colors. I might as well just use that for simplicity. It also gives me a little bit more flexibility as far as length from the trailer turn signal down to the bottom there so it has room to just kind of slack down in there. I talked about and showed you the color mappings on the back of the tail light and what those functions are. Now let me complete the picture by talking about where those connect on the light bar and what each function does. Coming from the light bar, we have five total wires. Four of those wires are in that wiring harness bundle, and one of them is a wire all by itself, and that's a white one, and that is for reverse. But let's talk about this four wire bundle here because we only have four wires on our tail light. In that four wire bundle, two of those are for left turn and right turn. Because again, this 60 inch LED is designed to go on the back of a truck, and have both a right and left blinker. And that's how that harness is designed for a standard trailer connection. So all we have to do is take two of those wires, it's the green and yellow wires, and combine those together because this taillight's gonna be on one side and both the left and right as it knows it are gonna be on one side of the RV. So that combines two of the wires, giving us four total to connect to the actual existing taillight. So let's talk about where they map. I already talked about the green and yellow wires are for turn signal. Those map to the red wire on the back of our signal. The white wire is our ground and it's also white on the turn signal, very convenient. The brown wire is our running lights wire. That has voltage on it anytime that the trailer is connected and the lights are on that brown wire is going to connect to the black wire on the back of the tail light. Now the only thing left is that single white wire that comes straight off the light bar and that is going to connect to the yellow wire on the back of the turn light and that is for our reverse. So now we've got all five wires, two combined down to four and we know how those map to our light bar so now it's just a matter of connecting it. Now this is the part where it's going to probably vary greatly depending on your RV and what the wiring looks like and what kind of access you have. On the driver side that we're doing first here, as I mentioned, our three wire connections that are already existing there only had two connections in them, so I was actually using that empty slot uh, to test. So I'm going to use uh, those exact same locations and just re-splice them with brand new connectors of the same type. And I'm just going to remove the old ones clean the wires off, re-splice them, and that's it. It made for a pretty easy situation on that side. On the passenger side, however, it's a different story. I have a little bit of a different wiring situation on this side. Number one, the those little three-way connectors, uh, splices that I had on the other side. On that side, they only had two wires in the three-wire splice. On this side, they have three because what's happening here is the wiring is coming from the front of the RV to here, tapping into this light. And then the three of the wires are common to both lights and those three run over to that side. There is of course the right blinker that goes to the side. Uh, and so that's my four wires. My point here is those taps are full. I'm not gonna be able to remove the old ones and put new ones on, adding the extra wire for the new taillight like I did on the other side. So what I'm gonna have to do, or oh, the other thing with that is I don't have as much slack on this side to get these these connectors out of here. I can get one of them, I think is about it. And the rest just don't pull up high enough. So I'm not gonna be able to get in here and do my wiring out here like before. I'm gonna have to tap in down here instead. And I think I might use tap clamps, tamp crimps, whatever for that, you'll see. 
before I get into using those tap splices, I want to talk a little bit about the splices I used for the actual wiring harness cable coming from the light bar, since I didn't capture that on the passenger side. If you've watched any of our previous projects where I've done wiring, you know that I have just a ton of different splices that I've used in these videos, because every situation is different. In this particular one, I'm using a heat shrink splice like I've used before. The difference is in the past I've shown to have a hard crimp in the middle, and then you shrink down over that after crimping the wires in. This is a little bit different. There's no hard crimp. It has solder in the middle of it. And what you do is you put your wires across each other underneath that solder, the solder point inside the heat shrink. And then you just heat shrink the whole thing down with a heat gun. It shrinks the insulation per normal heat shrink, but it also melts that solder over those connections and makes a really good connection. I really like these for very small gauge wires um, that I need to bundle together because they're nice and small and compact and it worked perfectly here. Like I mentioned on the passenger side, I did use tap splices just like I did on both sides in our 397 upgrade. Those taps are similar to the three wire taps I used on the other side in that they will actually splice over uh, a wire without having to strip it. That has a type of thing that just kind of cuts right down into it and makes a connection on the wire. The difference with these is this is designed for one pass-through wire. So the crimp goes through a pass-through like this, and then one additional wire that you want to tap into this wire that you're passing through. But it does crimp down just like the other ones do with that sort of pinching mechanism. The difference here is these don't have the built-in anti-moisture gel and all that cool stuff. So I did wrap these in electrical tape. That tube there should not be getting any water in it anyway. But just general moisture protection, I think the electrical tape is sufficient. I am tapping into the RV wiring here, not the wiring that's directly behind the tail light like I did on the other side, simply because of the space and where I was able to work with. Now, I'm not going to go into what color those wires were, because like I mentioned, it's completely irrelevant. Every RV will be different, guaranteed. I interrupt here with a little bit of a side note. On this tail light, where I use the Scotch, uh, Scotch lock pass-through connectors for all the connectors, all of them have held up well except for the reverse light. The reverse light is that white wire that comes right off the light bar all by itself. And it's a little bit smaller and thinner gauge than the rest of the wires. And this 3M connector is rated for a lot broader range of gauges uh, versus the scotch lock is uh, is pretty narrow. And I think the wire was just a bit too thin for this particular scotch lock. I think I would need the red one uh, that goes something like 18 to 22 AWG. This one worked fine. I replaced just that one connector, just the reverse line with this style connector, and it's been great ever since. I made all the final connections, and before tucking away all my wires, I hooked up the truck again and did another test. We are super happy with how this installation turned out and the end result is super bright. We are a lot more confident that our taillights will now be seen as we travel. If you made it this far, I really hope you'll consider clicking that subscribe button and clicking the bell down below. It would really help us out a lot. In the meantime, I picked out this video for you and YouTube picked out this one. Maybe go watch one of those and we'll see you next time.